Women of Reddit, what innocent behaviors have you changed out of fear you might be mistaken for leading men on? Like general affection, even with hugs and compliments I'm pretty reserved unless our relationship is clearly drawn out and we both know that nothing is being implied. Not me, but my little sister started dressing as the stereotypical butch lesbian when she went off to college, said that it made things a little easier, I'm still not sure how to respond. Trying to politely decline their advances. Sometimes I have to be rude just for them to get the point. Asking a question or giving them a compliment. But the worst thing is when I've walked back to my car alone and in the dark. I'd been out that day and was wearing cute and kind of revealing clothes. A guy followed me from the train station to where I'd parked. About 10 minutes. And when I got in my car he started to yell at me for leading him on. We hadn't spoken, but we made eye contact a couple of times on the hour long train ride, which seemed to be enough for him. I didn't think that the phrase leading someone along was so literal, but okay. Let's just say I don't eat bananas in public anymore. Whenever I eat a banana in public, I aggressively tear it apart with my bad teeth. If I have to pick something off the ground I bend my legs and squat down to do it so it doesn't look like I'm showing off my ass. Even though it'd be a lot easier to just bend down. Today, apparently, I shouldn't have carried a nightstand down the street. It was a little awkward but not heavy at all. And some dude came up to me and tried to take it from my hands. Unasked. I held onto it and told him. No thanks. He kept pulling on it. I had to ask him to let go. When I said Jesus Christ he went on. Oh. Like it was such a bad thing. Yes. Dude, that was absolutely a bad way to try to help someone out. You don't take something from someone's hands unbidden if you actually want to help them. Frankly, you pulling a medium large object from my grasp makes me think you're trying to steal from me or con me. I don't let on to any guys I just met that I'm into gaming. Especially if I know they're gamers too. There's still this stereotype floating around the gaming community that women who game are a rarity or they're not really a gamer. Just a s trying to get male attention. So if I bring up gaming early on I usually get one of two responses. Either the guy keeps hitting on me relentlessly or I get the gaming pop quiz. Any woman who plays games knows exactly what the gaming pop quiz is. There's also a third option which happens way less often. But I've experienced it all the same. Guy just outright becomes hostile, like I've dared to step foot in the boys only clubhouse or something. In all of my 20 plus years of gaming that only happened to me twice, though. And just a disclaimer, most of the guys I meet while I'm actually gaming are cool dudes. For some reason I only get this behavior out in the wild. Oh my god, the gaming pop quiz. I'm so glad someone finally mentioned it. I also once had a boy interrogate me on Attack on Titan because I casually mentioned in a conversation that I saw one episode and thought it was interesting. I work at a makeup store. Whenever a couple comes up to my till I make sure I avoid acknowledging the guy because I fear that either the girl is going to think her man is flirting with me or that the man is going to think I'm interested in him. This never used to be a concern until one girl flipped out at her boyfriend for flirting with me. He literally just responded good to me asking both of them how they were. Mentioning that I have a girlfriend, weirdly enough. You know how saying you have a boyfriend is normally pretty good for making guys go away? Well, saying you have a girlfriend just leads to a bunch of gross questions and offers of if you're ever looking for a threesome. Hit me up, gag. Like what? Does this guy think I'll go home and excitedly tell my gal pal? Guess what? I met a guy at a bar, and, you won't believe this, he wants to frick both of us. What a rare and exciting offer. We need to take him up on this. What I hate more is when they tell me it's just because I've never had a real man before. Jeez I know confidence is hot but your dong is not magic. It cannot ungay me. Not accepting any favor from a man. No rights. No coffers. Avoid avoid. It sucks. Yep. Last year I ran into a co-worker at the supermarket. And he offered to help me out with my groceries. We get to my car. And all of a sudden I'm arguing with him for 10 minutes about why I don't want to date him. I started off joking, then got serious, finally I just got in the car and left. Being young, turning 50 was the best idea I've ever had. I used to always greet everyone with a smile and happy eyes, either a nod or a quick hello. 
but I got hit on way too often while doing that, to the point where they kept following me. I'm just trying to be polite dammit. There was that time when I was 11 and I started needing a training bra and my teacher gave me a weird talk about keeping bra straps hidden at all times I didn't even know how to properly adjust the straps so they wouldn't slide and I really didn't need Mr. N's bra strap advice as an impressionable 11 year old. Whenever I'm talking with a guy I'm always super conscious about not mentioning too soon too late that I have a significant other. Too soon and it's jeez be god I was just making conversation and too late and it's jeez be way to lead me on. Thankfully since becoming engaged, this is less and less of a problem as my ring sort of speaks for itself on its own without my input. I Smiling. I see I'm clearly not alone in this, so many times, just being friendly and polite have been taken as showing interest. A few times after being asked out, there was the whole why were you leading me on followed by, B how does being genuinely nice make me a B. This always happened when I worked customer service jobs, where, you know, I was practicing good customer service. I'm quite fat and face none of the issues you gals do, bonus, maybe. I get to be nice and talkative and be invisible. I'm thinking more in terms of social media, but I found if a guy messages me and I send back so much as a polite hello that guy will never leave me alone. Every couple months he'll pop up trying to start a conversation, usually being rude or lewd, long after I've stopped messaging him. Last time it happened the guy had been trying this for a while and right now I'm 7 months pregnant and in a serious relationship and I just went off on him. It's so sad that it has to come to that, and I know it's just a few delusional, ridiculous guys that do this but Jesus, what on earth makes them think this behavior is ever going to get them anywhere? Hey I saw your post, hi, hey, how are you, hey. I don't ask random men for directions anymore. One time I was taking the Greyhound bus for the first time by myself. Asked a random guy where the line for where I wanted to go was. He didn't know but he was also looking for the same line. We agreed to look together. Why not? And ended up sitting next to each other and chatting. Two hours into the 5 hour bus ride he says he's tired and then falls asleep. Wraps his arm around me while he's asleep and then starts kissing my neck. I was so uneasy and scared in that moment bc I didn't know how he'd react to me pushing him off and I didn't want to make a scene. Also the seats were all full, half with actual sleeping people so switching wasn't really an option. I was leaning almost fully into the aisle to get away from him. Eventually he woke up and then asked if I had a boyfriend and wanted to date him. I promptly turned him down and listened to music for the next 3 awkward as heck hours. Showing any kind of concern for a guy. Like if you have a guy friend that looks sad and you try to be a good friend and comfort them that's seen as flirting somehow. When I was 13, my dad warned me against talking one on one with guys. He said that exclusivity could be interpreted as flirting. So yeah, that I guess. Honestly, even making conversation, being kind and genuinely interested in what they have to say can be misunderstood as flirting because so few women do it for fear that they will look like they're flirting. I don't want to resign myself to ostracizing half the human population, so I'm just going to keep being kind and friendly to guys and hopefully it will catch on. I've had to deliberately force myself to stop squeeing or smiling at puppies being walked by single men who aren't obviously gay, because of the frequency with which interest in the puppy gets interpreted as interest in the human. I just smile at the dog and not the owner. During my prepubescent years I had a lot of male and female friends and I found it easy to talk to both genders because I treated both the same way, as if they were full people deserving of my interest and attention during a conversation. During the teenage years I realized that more and more of my male friends started dropping off because they assumed that my friendship meant that I was really in love with them. In early adulthood I became apprehensive to even start friendships with men and as a mid-twenties adult I am apprehensive to even hold deep conversations with men lest they expect something in return. Sure, I'll do small talk and I'm friendly but I won't ever let you know me or try to get to know you unless I know for sure that you're not one of those guys who thinks that women are incapable of holding an engaged conversation unless they crave the D. Just about everything friendly. I don't do that whole pull the fake truck horn to get the trucker to honk. The reactions changed as I got older. 
When I was young and still in my hometown, my friend and I got into a lot of bars underage. We would usually just go to get drinks and food while we talked about life. Most of the time though, she would get drunk and go dance with some guy she just met, which left me at a bar. Bored, alone. I was always approached by dudes who wanted to talk to me. I was bored as frick and a conversation would be nice, but I would always make it abundantly clear that I had a boyfriend and didn't want to advance beyond talking. These dudes did not care. Hey, dancing with me doesn't mean you're cheating on your boyfriend. I know it's 3 in the morning and we're both drunk, but if you come out to my car with me, I can teach you how to drive stick and sell you the car for cheap. Super persistent and I could never get rid of them. I just turned into a giant bee whenever I went there so nobody else talked to me while my friend was making poor life choices. I almost never go out anymore and when I do I'm always with my boyfriend so nobody ever bothers me. But if I went alone, I'd feel like some kind of conquest for a dude there, looking to frick a girl in a relationship. Moral of the story, I hate bars. I know this seems sad, and honestly I wish there were a better way, but I will almost always find an excuse to not be alone with someone who I can sense has an interest in me while I have none in them. I've just had too many people make their move without just telling me how they feel. As a result, I avoid and that crap gets really freaking difficult sometimes. I'm a southern girl. I call everyone sweetheart, love, darling and hun. And I mean everyone. Even if I hate you, it's oh. Bless your heart darling, but I've learned that with my male friends. I have to be very careful. As a lesbian, they tend to think that if I call them hun, that it must mean that they have the magical powers to turn me straight. I have a few male friends who don't hide the fact that they would love to do the dirty with me. I tend to try not to talk to them a lot because I hate to make them feel like I was leading them on. I tend to make sure with them that I really watch what I call them. But I mean, it's hard. I don't even remember half of my friends names sometimes because I am used to calling them terms of endearment. Not female, but I've noticed one. Bananas. Women don't peel it and then slip its length into their mouth. They break it off in small chunks. I had a girlfriend who would occasionally feel the texture of her colleagues ties. We had to have a talk about how stroking other men's chests in the office might be misleading. Being in shape. You have been visited by the good sleep pizza. You will be blessed with cozy sleeps but only if you upvote before going to sleep. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.